If you do not do shit for the Common Collective and you trying to tap into Law of Attraction, which relies on the Common Collective to shoot you ducats, to shoot you pesos, to keep your account fat, but you don't do nothing for nobody because you self-interested. Hopefully what I'm saying is making sense to the point that you can stop and you can get over yourself and understand that when it comes to law of attraction, when it comes to the bubble eye bins, when it comes to the mansion, it's all indicative of how you serve the common collective. But you cannot tune in and tap into the common collective when you are too busy with your emotional responses to bullshit. You are now listening to the sounds of a God in the flesh, my lineage is ancient. I come from beyond any place you could imagine in your imagination. Mommy was my spaceship, it took a nine months to get me here. I finally made it, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. My star got six points, so I burn brighter. The any pentagram on Hollywood sidewalk, I'm much too hot. You cannot cool me off. Now the sun don't chill our love. Check the round that I spill on y'all. It's the best by far. Initiate of the sacred brotherhood of elite rappers. I'm a master builder, grand verbalizer, young old timer. The tippy top shot original Don Dada is written in the stars. Look me up there. So in this episode of the Law of Attraction. This episode of Law and Attraction is called Self Interest. Every week we dedicate the final segment after the astrology to talk about Law of Attraction. You can sign up for the Law of Attraction in my description course, which takes place September 4th. It is a lecture. I'm not promising you that when you sign up to this Law of Attraction course that you will get a bubble eye bins from 1999 and that you will be in the new cash money video back that ass up 2022 edition because the 2021 edition of back that ass up was nasty but i digress um let's start off with narcissism and the narcissist flower and it was an incredibly handsome young man or woman who belittled those who loved him right and there was another energy that saw Narcissus or whatever his name was. Um, Narcissus, the guy Narcissus. There was a girl behind him named Echo. And Echo could only repeat what, sh what was said to her. So the crazy part about the narcissist or narcissist, he would look in the river and be like, I am so beautiful. And he would hear the echo. I am so beautiful. Right. And, t and, and he got to a point where he was starving. And he would just be like, I am so hungry. And then you hear back. I am so hungry. And long story short, Narcissus died because Echo could only repeat to him the words that he was saying because he was under the spell of a river guy and this spell metamorphosized or materialized as the Narcissus flower. Now, the moral of the story to me is that you say the words to others that you want to hear back. But you take into account that everybody is going to fall into that shit. And the ill shit about it is that people would be really tying into your narcissism. You might say some shit like, I'm beautiful, right? And the nigga come into your DMs like, good morning, beautiful. And you like, oh, this is the one right here. He's confirming my, my beliefs. Perfectly fine. But narcissism is when you don't think that the person admiring you has a mind, a heart, and a soul. So let's talk about self-interest. These are some serious questions I want you to think about. Do people outside of you think about themselves like you think about yourself or do you remind them of the things that you or them they should do based upon what you feel they should do 
it's almost subconscious and, and almost unconscious to the fact of people reflecting on what they would have done if they were Kanye West, if they were the baby. If they were Lil Nas X, if they were Connie Chung, if they were Bryant Gumbo, if they were Philip Turner, if they were Philip Bailey, I wouldn't have sang reasons like that. I would have gave them some more bass. Well, you ain't Philip Bailey and you ain't part of the earth, wind and fire. So it's inconsequential what you would have done or what you wouldn't have done. So when you think about people, do you imagine that they have a mind of their own? Do they have a soul of their own? And do you assist them in finding that soul? Or do you try to interject and, and, and be a distraction between them and their soul and them to tie in and tune in to you, so into your energy? Because you are super important. This is what you tell yourself. And all you looking for is somebody else to agree with you. Think about that. In realms, in the realms of law of attraction, if you are so important and you want somebody else to agree with you, you will be waiting forever. Cause the fact probably is more so that you may be important, but essentially who's really important if you in your mind it's your mind and your body. It's almost naturally to make yourself feel important because you yourself. It's not a hard thing to do. Even more so, social media just allows us to exaggerate, amplify, or magnify the fact that we think that we are important because we literally have to. It's not even a stretch. It's not even something that's going to be hard or difficult for us to establish within ourselves. Hey, I'm important, which is a cool thing. But now you want somebody else to agree with you and perpetuate your importance in day in and day out. So now this is all law of attraction because now you're single. If you get the vortex, if you get the vortex by Abraham Hicks, the whole book is about relationships. Here you, here I was thinking I'm about to get a bubble eye beans out of this book. I'm about to finally read the vortex. It's like you and your baby mama. What's the real deal about that? Oh shit. Abraham, why you go straight to me and my wife and shit like that? Why, why is you making that the issue to the vortex? Give me the bubble eye bins and nothing else. I don't want to work on my relationships, Abraham. I just need a million dollars. But I guarantee you, if you are super important, you are single, your money ain't together. You are happy because you waiting on people to see how special you are like you see yourself. It's damn near impossible for somebody to look at you and reflect on you the deep truths of your life based upon just looking at you because you've come to this conclusion that you're special by example. Some people don't even have examples of specialness. They just see other people feel special about themselves and say, oh, this is the wave. Just do positive affirmations. But see, the deeper truth is that you are the only person that will ever view yourself as special, ever. I'll do you an example. The person that's viewing you special right now, punch their ass in the mouth right now. Just cold cock their ass right in the fucking face right now and see if they still view you as special as they viewed you before you punched their ass in the mouth. That specialness gonna go away so fast you would be imagining if they ever thought you were special in the first place. You understand how it work? If you ever see a person view you as special, take their purse, if a girl say, no, that's my baby dad, he's special to me. Nah, 
I think he more special. I love him more than he love himself, right? Somebody ever told you that bullshit before? Take their purse and shit in it and give it back to them and see if they still keep that same energy. Boy, they'll never talk to you again. And you said, damn, I thought I was special to you. Not until you did this weird shit. You shit in my purse. Now I got to find my wallet and I got to rub shit off of it. We cannot be cool no more. You is no longer special. After you shit in that purse, you might take a bath, put on a new outfit, kick it with a new girl. At a certain point, it's going to click. Oh, I'm still special. Oh, I'm special. After you done just shit in this lady purse, right? Punch the little girl in the face, right? You ain't special. <laughs> But in reality, when we deal with people, we have to view ourselves as special. When we're online, nobody's ever gonna talk about shit in, in a purse online, right? Because they're so self-interested in how you view them and making sure that, okay, let me position myself. Like, oh, I wish I wore wigs. Cause I would wear wigs and then take them bitches off in the middle of the goddamn show. Just to show you that I'm not self-interested. Just take that bitch off. Today, I'm gonna be reading cards with my wig on. For Taurus, my wig is my wig is off. But for Leo, my wig is on, right? I wish we could get that energy. Sometimes I want the wig on, sometimes I want the wig off, cause it don't matter. It's a wig. It is a wig. Like that's that's a key that's a key telltale sign that you super tied into your self interest. You want people to think a certain aspect about yourself that don't truly exist. And this this is a hard conversation for most. But if it wasn't the truth, I wouldn't have never said it. Whether it be hard or not. Your self-interest, based upon how people view you, like a person viewing you as special is insignificant. Because the moment that they say you special, they can tell you that you're not special the next moment, and you caught up in that shit. You caught up in the cycle of people perceiving you as special or interesting, and the reality is that it is never, ever about that. Your self-interest is not significant in reference to the law of attraction. The law of attraction is a specific law. It has a specific purpose that self-interest is just not included in it. However, when we reference law of attraction, the first thing you think about is the house that you're trying to attract. The car that you're trying to attract, the baddie that you're trying to attract, the Idris Elba type energy you're trying to attract. Cause you're self-interested in the fact that if I pull up in a bubble eye bins, I am now significant. Meaning that you cannot create the significance of your present moment to be the magnet to law of attraction. See, I'm trying to explain something that's very complicated. And at the same time, you gotta want the shit to even understand the words that's coming out of my mouth. So I apologize if I'm losing a couple people right now. But I'm going to repeat it for those who can come to the conclusion that, no, I want the law of attraction and I'm here to understand it. The law of attraction would be the same law as the law of theft. Not the law of theft particularly, but the law of theft generally. It is a law. The law of theft is perpetual and exists for every store. If you walk into any store and walk out with something, you're breaking the law. But otherwise, it's just a law that exists to keep things in balance and order. In reference to the law of attraction, you could tap into it whenever you want to. But it's not going to knock on your door. And then, once you get the reason why it's books, the reason why narcissistic narcissistic entities and energies tap into the law of attraction because they know based upon how they have programmed you that all you want is external things. If the key point to law of attraction was chakra work 
and shadow work, then I wouldn't have never did it in that order. But I'm trying to lay out a specific energy to bring about the awareness to the magnet of your desires is an internal reflection and an awareness. If you are too busy with the energies that you should be receiving from a man or receiving from a woman or receiving from your job or receiving from your family, then you are saying I am significant and I should be treated this way. I should be loved. People should support me. People should do this with me and all of this shit because I am important. You're forgetting the fact that every single person on the earth think the same way that you think. So when you look at the world, it's a whole bunch of people who view themselves as self-important, who have the inability to connect with people. And since we have the inability to connect with people, this quasi government, this quasi political establishment is running roughshod because at the end of the day, we're not connecting because we are all individually important. And why we're individually important is because of social media. It's really about your subscribers and things of that nature. And we're just going to remove the fact that people can buy subscribers. People can like it's a whole store you can go to to fake to take fake ass selfies up on Woodward and Nine Mile. It's called the selfie store or some shit like that. You can just walk up in there and fucking take cool ass selfies and motherfuckers think you way cooler than what you actually are. You can live in a dumpster truck. Go to the selfie place, take selfies, post them all online, and people have no understanding that you live in a whole dumpster truck. It smell like whole dumpster juice, but the pictures is fucking fire. Because most people are self-interested. But self-interesting, being self-interest is meaning that you don't understand that everybody is fucking self-interested. As a spiritual leader, I'm talking to everybody on this live, everybody that watched the video and make it this far in the video, I guarantee you that you're a spiritual leader. Part of you being a spiritual leader is realizing how everybody else think. And if you realize that everybody else is self-important or view themselves as self-important, would you then do the same shit that everybody else is doing to lead and guide and assist and help people? Or would you remove that and understand that my reflection on my importance, my reflection on my memories, because I tell you, as much as you think about your memories, you'll never bring them times back. You'll never bring that energy back. So it's a very important to be present, very important as you are present to tune in and tap into the common collective and then figure out what the fuck do you do for them? You could do something as simple as read a fucking book and break the fucking book and upload it on YouTube. Be but, but be persistent in the fact of you reading these books. And sometimes you might say, shit, don't nobody care about this book. No, do you care about the book? Then somebody else cares about the book. Do you care about dancing? Then somebody else cares about dancing. Can you teach us intuitive dance? Shit, can you t teach us how to twerk? I see you on your Instagram story twerking your ass off. Do you got a twerk class or something to that effect? Or just do twerking lessons and see who tap in and tune in and see who DM you. Hey, do you do private lessons? Me and my girls, we want to learn how to twerk like you twerk. Can you do a class for us? But it's all about what you do for the common collective. And I'll do you another better. I'll do you one better. What do you do for the common collective? If you do not do shit for the common collective and you trying to tap into law of attraction, which relies on the common collective to shoot you ducats, to shoot you pesos, to keep your account fat, but you don't do nothing for nobody because you self-interested. Hopefully what I'm saying is making sense to the point that you can stop and you can get over yourself and understand that when it comes to law of attraction, when it comes to the bubble eye bins, when it comes to the mansion, it's all indicative of how you serve the common collective. But you cannot tune in and tap into the common collective when you are too busy with your emotional responses to bullshit. 
But if you're saying, well, I've been through this, I've been through that, this is my excuse. I can't really care about nobody because I got, I just went through a, a bad breakup. Me and my baby daddy not getting along, so this is my reason why I cannot serve the Common Collective, but yet and still, I want something from them. It's some people that can do a GoFundMe page right now and get thousands of dollars. It's some people that do a GoFundMe and won't get a fucking dollar. The difference between a person who don't get a dollar is probably somewhere in their genetics or in their DNA, they done, done did a lot for a lot of people. And you would just see a mama somewhere on the news, right? I'm about to get evicted. I don't know where I'm going to go. And the news be like, her GoFundMe is da 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 And then the next day, such and such that made $200,000 off her GoFundMe page. In the past lifetime, she was the one do it or she or he or whatever whatever gender they probably gave a lot to all of those people in the past life and this whole situation that led up to them being covered on the news is they law of attraction being returned to them and and maybe they was cleaning toilets for like what's the word i'm looking for um when you make minimum wage. Maybe you've been working minimum wage, but you deserve more money, right? All of these things, bro. You ain't doing them shits for no reason, man. I, like, for real, I don't work every fucked up job in the world. But I used to work those fucked up jobs. Like, give me the hardest job. I used to say that. Give me the hardest job. Let me get this shit over with. So I done had crazy ass jobs. I could do a whole video on just all of the jobs that I worked in. At the same time, I didn't work those jobs for the persons that I was working for. I was working them jobs for me. I was figuring shit out. I was figuring things about business. I was figuring out how strong I was. I was figuring out the work ethic that I need to start my own business. All of these things that I've learned, but now, I'm OD with it. I'm constantly thinking about ways that I can serve the common collective. And for that, I'm benefited and people contribute to me all day, every day from all different types of angles out here in these streets. Cause I made it a point to give information to people that are bring them some value in life. And then I just wait for it. I don't press it. I don't beat your door down. I don't scam you. I don't film you. I don't flam you. It's going to come to me. I done put in too much work out here in these streets. And I don't need it from you. Right? It's going to come. Right? And this is the law of attraction that I want to bring to your understanding. If you sit in here looking in the mirror, seeing how fine you is, and things of that nature, cool. But you narcissistic. And narcissism is a psychological disposition. It is the understanding of what you say to others and you waiting for that thing back. And you like, oh, this person is toxic. No, you're toxic. Because you hold the energy. Like if you can call somebody toxic, it's because you're toxic. And if you look back to that toxic energy, that toxic energy is happening right now. In realms to your law of attraction, you're attracting more toxic dudes. So check your DM. Every dude that didn't text your DM from the time this video started to the end of it, all of them dudes is toxic. And that's my show for today.